Hello and welcome to the 2021 World Orienteering Championships. We are set for a fantastic week long of racing with all the different disciplines covered. And we are starting today with a real bang in this fantastic fortress here in Terezin in the Czech Republic for what is gonna be a fantastically technical and tricky race. We have also got some spectators allowed to watch these races. They are in some of these park areas in the town and also at the finish arena as well. But it's three years since we crowned our last sprint world champions and they've finally got the opportunity to race at the highest level again today. Jonas Mertz is sitting alongside me to uh, talk through all of the races this afternoon, starting with the men's and then with the women's. And really, I think we're going to have some fantastic competitions today. They started off um, this morning with the qualifier, also around this uh, old fortress. And they, they've already been in this kind of area before as well, having had the uh, model race here. But let's have a look at some of the pictures from the terrain. And uh, really, we can, we can also have a look back at the qualifier this morning. And there weren't any real surprises, were there, Jonas? No, we didn't see any big surprises, especially not in the men's race. Uh, in the women's qualification, we have seen that Hanna Lundberg from Sweden, who had a great uh, week earlier this year at the European Championships, she missed punch, so she missed the final here. But otherwise, there were no uh, bigger negative surprises, at least. And this is, you can just look at the, the terrain here. We've got these kind of tunnels going under these forts. We've got these big uh, kind of water channels. We've got the different levels. And, and it's really, really special terrain here. Yeah, it is very special. It's, uh, I mean, it, you have both of it. We have different levels and you have the tunnels and you have to be very careful because as we will see later on when we see the course, there are many short controls and you have to be very quick in your head to not get behind your in your map reading and always be prepared for the coming challenge because uh, once you're out here uh, like with your thinking you get behind it will slow you down and you can really get lost and lose uh, many seconds that's kind of the same you've seen already in the qualification uh, there were big uh, time gaps compared to uh, for example the european championships and also the qualification there yeah, but they are, you know, they're familiar. They've seen all the kind of planners notes as to how all this is mapped and it, it's very uh, specialized. They've been out on the model event. They've had a chance to kind of get familiar with it, get familiar with which bits are quicker, which bits are slower as well. But looking at this uh, men's course, which we're starting with, we've got these uh, 3.9 kilometers, 40 meters of climb and about uh, 14 and a half minutes are expected winning time of course they'll be running much further than that but let's have a look at the course mm -hmm. they start in this arena here and head straight into a park with some short controls yeah and you were talking about it getting familiar with the map i think the start is quite good to get in contact with the with the map and get used to the map reading it's not the most difficult start here it's good for the runners to maybe get rid of some uh, nervous uh, moments in the very beginning but then at control 9 you have to change your focus because then you get some time to start reading uh, the route choice to control 11 and then especially the one 12 13 which i think will be kind of decisive um, really use your, the time you get uh, towards control 10 to read ahead and then as you see here 13 14 15 these those short controls it's very very tricky there you have also a map flip at control 18 so it won't be uh, s such a big mess for the runners as mm -hmm. we have it here on the screen uh, but it is difficult and you have these different levels and you will see that very soon in a more um, yeah, in a different way with an analysis where you see the differences on the level and also the route choices. Yeah, so we'll go through the course in some more detail now. And uh, we've got, we've kind of made some cool graphics to create a th kind of a 3D image of what this map looks like. So heading straight out uh, into the park as we've already seen. And then we're going to have a look at some of those kind of few different route choices. 
and there's lots of artificial barriers used here as well but this is the point where we'll see the athletes first going through this park this will have the the running cameras following them through here and there are a few route choices here Mm -hmm. You named the artificial fences, it's something they use here, especially in the beginning. Here, the first one, seven, eight. The blue option is the shortest. The green one is quite okay as well. Um, it has a bit uh, less of turns there, so it might be quite good because you don't have to slow down as much as on the blue course. But I think blue and green are good on this route choice. Yeah, they're only about five metres difference, so you've got to do that 180 degree turn um, if you're going on the green one. But this is kind of what it looks like from their perspectives and seeing uh, the different ways they can split up to get into the control, which is around about here. They've taped off all the little grassy parts um, around all these, all the bits that kind of marked in olive green, so they are uncrossable as well. Then there's a little route choice to head towards control 10, and then let's have a look at this one then, 12 to 13. Mm -hmm. This the longest leg of the course you said would be quite decisive. Yeah, and I think this this leg actually starts already towards control 10 because then you, there you have to check already the tunnels which you will use later on out from control. 12. Here it's very decisive that you decide quickly in the beginning. It's good to go for the purple one, the green one is quite good as well. Um, but don't go for the others because it, they are quite a bit longer. So you have to be very fast in making a decision there. And, uh, and this is the decision here, point you here, have, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, you've got to, you, you need really to go turn right though the uh, purple and the green ones. As you can see them on the right hand side of the picture there, that is going to be the best route choice otherwise you kind of have to do what we can see here on the blue and yellow and kind of come go beyond the control and come back again and this is kind of the end of this route choice uh, as you can see approaching the control from the north or you approach it you go beyond the control and you come at it from the south in this direction either way punching the control just about here Then we've got a few more shorter ones, and this is our kind of second TV spot. This is a one we're really going to be focusing on, and there is a route choice for this one as well. Mm -hmm. And again, here you have to make the decision right at the control. You have to back out or you go for the orange one where you can continue in the direction. Here, the yellow one is the shortest. I think it's also, it's not only the shortest, it's also, also the fastest one. Yep, so they've got to go up on top of this level here, on top of the fortress, and stay high at that particular point. But there's lots of controls quickly enough. Will they have time to actually make that choice? So then 18, as we said, they have the map flip. And then back into 20 to 21 is another route choice leg. And this time it's the orange one that is the shortest. But it's a case of, do you kind of go through or round here? Yeah. Uh, you have often those decisions right in the beginning, you go around which which uh, direction you leave the control and then I think, I mean it's a few meters, uh, sometimes it can be decisive how high the grass is, um, mm -hmm. what the runnability, how many turns you have to take. Um, so it's hard to decide on beforehand or for us uh, to see which one will be the fastest. I don't think it will matter so much if you have one of those which is only a few meters apart but you can lose time if you go for one that's 20 or 30 meters longer so this and is the green route see... choice yeah and they'll have gone through this section um a few times already uh, making use of these artificial fences as well um and but it's about but kind of keeping on top of the navigation with so many uh controls very close together and then you've got to so you've got to go do a big s bend here and then go underneath the uh fortress and back out again for 21. Mm. And you have so many short controls in here so you never really get the time to calm down down a little bit and to prepare the legs that are coming. I think that's the big difficulty. You really have to be cool in your head and just try to read ahead as much as possible. One of the mo more or most technical um, world champ sprint races in yeah, your opinion? Maybe. I mean it's it's, it's kind of different that we, I mean, the, the runners, they are prepared for that kind of orienteering. But I, I like the fact that it's building up in the beginning. It's quite easy. It's basic orienteering. Then you start to have these artificial fences in, this, in the park. The longer leg to control 10, where you have some time to breathe. 
slow down, but also use that time to prepare the coming route choices. Mm. Try to see the tunnels you want to use later on in the race already when you approach uh, a control, maybe one or two controls before you actually get there because you, you will see those tunnels and you will get used to them. So it's good to try to see them before you use them. Yeah, so we've, uh, as we just saw, we've got, the, we just had the start list up um, on the screen and they've gone off in the order that they've, they've qualified. So those who've qualified fastest in their heat uh, starting last, but Isaac von Cruz and Puerna coming in to take the lead over Ricardo Rankan. Uh, at this point, so 13.46, that's very, very quick there, and uh, takes the lead by a good 20 seconds or so. And he was, you know, he's one of the ones maybe who are who qualified quite low compared to what we thought he might be capable of, potentially. So too with um, Ricardo Rankin uh, after his uh, sixth place at the European Champs Sprint. Um, but who who are we looking for? You know, who are our main runners and riders in this race? Well, I mean, we have many big names here and it's mm -hmm. hard to say. Uh, I mean, we had the European champs. We had a sprint before this year, but it was a totally different characteristics. In that race, there was one route choice that was very decisive. Today, it's many short choices you have to take, which can be decisive. So it's kind of a different race. But I would go for, I mean, we had the qualification, so we had a, we have an indication. Matthias Kiburz, of course, uh, the Czech runners, Thomas Krivta, Wojtek Knall, Kasper Fosser, the European champion, Emil Svensk, Janik Michels, uh, Max Peter Beimer, but also Daniel Hoopman. I mean, there are so many names we can name here. <laughs> uh, and, it will uh, be very interesting. Yeah, but it's interesting to make note that we just had the European champs where there's, there's been huge teams. You know, there's like eight Swiss men on the start list for the sprints. You know, here, most, most nations have only got three competing with extra places if you've got defending um, world champions, European champions, or um, uh, kind of regional champions, or um, your uh, current leader in the World Cup. So there's really not as many athletes running per nation. And... I, I think it meant that the qualifier was very, very different to what we saw at the European Championships. Much easier to qualify. Maybe some people would have been taking it easy or slightly easier in the qualifier. I don't know what your thoughts are on that. Um, I think it depends a bit on what kind of runner you are. But, I mean, we all remember Gustav Berryman who went out in the qualification mm. at the European Champs just slowing down a little bit in the qualification. And I don't think that anyone really decides on beforehand that I, that he or she won't go uh, full speed here. Maybe when you approach the last control and you know that you had a good race that you don't have to push all the way into the finish, but I don't think that they uh, actively slow down to save some energy here. No, but over the last few hours since that qualifier, they've been focusing on uh, recovering, being in the best shape they can be for uh, you know two races in one day. And Gauta Hall and Steyer are going into joint second place there at control number nine. That's where we get our first split. See how they've gone. Not too much tricky orienteering in the very first part of the course, as we said. Uh, kind of two very distinctive halves here. As we can see Peter Hodgkinson into the finish. And you, see, you can see how he's been compared to the leader at every single point, dropping a bit of time between controls 12 and uh, 15 there. Mm, compared to the remember, leader. Mm? Uh, we re remember the change of characteristics after control 10. So you can see that he might not have been able to just keep up uh, with this kind of orienteering there. There's many small decisions, quick decisions to take. And in the beginning where it is this, more normal sprint orienteering as we know it from the Central Europe. It was easier for him to keep up with the best runners. But Peter Hodgkinson into third place there, managed to catch up a few seconds um, on the lead right at that very last point. And we head back to the start for Sir Antoine Odom. It's actually all the Danes, uh, all six, uh, so I mean, uh, I think must, they must have seven because they've got Maya Alm as the defending champion. All seven Danes uh, managed to qualify for this final. There are six nations who achieved uh, all of their athletes 
into the final. France, Switzerland, Norway, Finland and the Czech Republic alongside Denmark. So it's great to see what, what ha we have seen in the past few years as, as quite a young Danish team um, really managing to get all of them through in, into this final. So Thomas Heikeler here, his uh, walk debut, 33rd at the European Champs Sprint. And you can see he's, he's beh beh behind the Swede here into control number 15. But we can see he took what was the yellow route in our original graphics to get into this control 15, which we think is the best choice. Heading back out of, of, of 14, back up the hill, and then there's a few more short controls here. So good route choice at least this point. Back at the start line, we have Frederic Tranchon, the Frenchman. Silver medalist from the walk, walk sprint in 2017. Been doing a lot of sky running last summer, where, where we had no orienteering competitions, no season last summer, and even the summer before that as well. Been making some waves on that scene and really attacking this course. It's quite a long run out here. In fact, they passed the finish, which is just on his left there, as they head out towards the first two controls. So a lot of opportunity for the spectators to cheer them on, but also for them to really... Oh, he almost was, uh, missed the turning out there to control number one. I think he had to um, run all the way to the starting point before moving to the right uh, yeah, of course you have to pass the starting point so he he's not allowed to turn too early i don't know if he <laughs> really was hesitating there but it's kind of a thing you don't really know at what point you're actually allowed <laughs> to turn because <laughs> you should approach the starting point yeah that's right so maybe he was just being extra careful to to go that way but the, this long run out on the start gives you a, you know, a few seconds to, to try and look at those first few controls, which are very, very close together. So behind yeah. Gauth, uh, Gauta here to uh, the second split. Mm, and here we see that he, that's the difficulty. He was not really ready. Um, he was not very well prepared for what's coming. It's kind of the result of that you run through the tunnel you see the control very late and mm. usually you want to start planning the next route as soon as you see the control because you have to do the job first all the way to the control and then you move on to the next control and when you have it that you come out of the tunnel and the control is just to the right you get only one or two seconds so um, it's hard to prepare the next route if you don't leave your normal routines at that point But he took those few extra seconds and managed to get what we think is the, the quickest route, though, between 14 and 15. Looking good on through these sections as well. So we're back at our kind of first TV split, running behind Sir Antwada Odom here, the Dane, and going uh, around this artificial fence. I think the planners really have done a good job with their artificial fences here, making it, adding in different, different parts and you know, all the athletes have been able to look at old maps. They've been able to look at um, Google Maps, Google Street View, things like that to try and um, get as much familiarization with this area, with this terrain as possible. But just putting in those extra barriers adds that challenge, adds the route choice things. And we, we saw that used very, very well in the qualifier this morning. And I think will be used... Oh, uh, just missed the control there. We've, I think we will see that used very well uh, here in today's competition as well. So here we are at control 10 and we see that none of them took... Oh, now 
here out there yes none of them took the route that we think is the fastest mm. uh, when you use the two tunnels there first to the south and then to the west um, but Rankan and from Cruz and Kwana, they took quite an okay route but the exit wasn't perfect let's put it like this yep so that's our first indication of those route choices from 12 to 13 We'll see if anyone's able to find those uh, tunnels all the way through and whether that is quicker. But uh, Frederick Tronchon here will get the first indication of whether he's made a quick start very shortly. experienced runner Tronchon with uh, medals, many medals to his name, but not been running as well recently with 40, only commanded 41st at the European Champs sprint race. And you can see, yeah, he's already behind by 15 seconds behind uh, Isaac von Krusenbrenner, who is, I think, still our current leader at that point. So uh, Tronchon not quite maybe got the speed, uh, the short, sharp speed that you need, but he could well be very good once we hit the forest. Um, races with the steep climbs we're expecting to see there. Mm. And at this point, that's what I named to Control 10. You see, he has a lot of time to read the map and he's doing it carefully there. So I'm sure he is preparing the routes coming. Maybe already the one from 12 to 13 as well. So Florian Hoval just starting there. The first of the Swiss to have qualified to this final. All the Swiss have managed to do that. Interestingly, I don't think he's he's got uh, five world champs medals, of w four of which are from the relays. But Florian Hovald has not raced sprint at the world champs beforehand, so a very experienced runner, but not actually raced the sprint here. Uh, as but we he look back to the start line, mm -hmm. he has been racing the European champs sprint and oh, won medals yeah. there. Uh, for example, in the Czech Republic, so maybe a yeah, good sign for him. There. Exactly, and was eighth uh, at the European Champs sprint just uh, last month. Janusz Bonek from Austria, again making his World Champs debut. And then we're looking at Gauta Hallensdiver into the finish here. And from this point, it's very simple, just through this tunnel and then here to this final control that they all used in this morning's qualifier as well. So Gauta Hallens Diver to the finish. Mm, and uh, looking at his split times, you can see that he, uh, towards the last part here, he lost 20 seconds between 15, control 15 and 21. So he had some problems with I guess one of the root choices there in the end. Yeah, but slots there into third place. Now here we have the defending champion, Daniel Hubman. In fact, he uh, commented on his uh, social media that uh, no one's beaten him in a sprint world champs for the past five years. I mean, the last three couple we haven't had a sprint world champs, but <laughs> he, we know how... Uh, how Daniel Hoopman can really step it up when it matters and you know he is the consummate professional on this level like this so um, mm -hmm. we will see how well he's able to do with this race and especially like it's a very technical course uh, with many quick decisions and I think that's something that can suit him quite well it would be different for him I mean he's uh, not the youngest of all runners in the starting field here uh, anymore so um, I think for him it's kind of an advantage that you have to make many quick decisions and that it's not a only physical sprint race here yeah the technical side will really suit him as uh, yeah he's not got the fastest flat speed mm, here we see the comparison between from Krusenkwerna and Hovald, see that they split up. It seems that von Krusenkwerna had a better route choice there. 
Yeah, it looks very, very good, although Florian Halvald is quite close and will get his time uh, at the next split in a couple of controls time. But that really kind of, uh, I guess, was our first indication of the different route choices to go through uh, three to four and then four to five. It's not too tricky, the navigation, but really there are very few controls. The, the short ones, it's kind of simple to know which way to go, but beyond the really short ones, there's always some sort of route choice. And I think, again, the planners really trying to make it very, very tricky at all the, all the times here. So Hovald in joint fifth place, 11 seconds down. Mm. Uh, but coming back to the route choices, I mean, it's not it's not the same race that we, as we have seen at the European Champs. Here you have many uh, routes or legs where you can have three or four different routes and they may different 20 or 30 meters. Sometimes you take the right one, some at the few points you will not take the right one, but it won't, like at the European Champs, you, if you took the wrong route to the, on the very long leg, you were more or less mm -hmm. out of the race. Here, I think it will sum up, you will, all of the runners will take the wrong route at one point or two points. Uh, it just, uh, yeah, the key is just to try to <laughs> lower the number of the wrong mm -hmm. choices here. Yep, you've got to get more right than wrong on balance. And uh, here's Frederick Tronchon. We can already see even more his time uh, dropping compared to the others as he makes his way towards control number 15. There we go. Just punching there into 11th spot. So a minute off the pace currently. They're really attacking hard and you can kind of see, you know, these these big slopes. They really are quite steep, not really what we're used to seeing on a on a major sprint champ. So the contour interval is only two meters and it, there's only 40 meters of climb on the course, but it really uh, looks quite punishing. Let's have a look at, again, some of these route choices and looks mm -hmm. like they're losing time there, Daniel Hubman, compared to the current leader, Isaac von Krusenfreiner. Mm, quite a lot of time there. Can be around 10 seconds already. Yeah, and I think there's a few route choices there being a little bit longer mm. or slower anyway. That's what I mentioned before. If you <laughs> choose the wrong route choice three or four times, it really will sum up. Uh, it would have been okay to have it once. If you have it twice or three times, it will sum up. And uh, as we see here, I guess it's around 20 seconds. Yeah, well, we will see that very, very shortly. But Daniel Hubman might be able to catch some seconds or, or not lose some further seconds uh, towards the part of the race where it really gets very, very technical. He's so used to being able to kind of keep his call cool on the world stage. And we'll just come in and punch this control here, number eight. And then this is where we're going to get the split. And we can see it's more than 10 seconds already. Let's see if it's going to be close to the 20, you guessed, Jonas. There we go, uh, 19. Not bad. <laughs> so Daniel Hubman there, down in 14th after a slowish start, but... 19 seconds is not too much at this point. And, and yeah, we need to maybe talk back about the qualifier again and we seeing quite big time differences um, in those who qualified. So only being 19 seconds behind might not be too bad. Jakob Glonek here, uh, ready at the pre-start area. Of course, for the Czech uh, production team, going to focus on their athletes um, at this Home World Championships for them. This is Florian Hovald punching control number 14 and this that looked much better in terms of the flow that he had through uh 
through that control, already had made his decision about where to go, really, really looking a lot more smooth. But you can see the seconds ticking down there to von Krusenfreiner. And still with that 17 second lead at that point is pretty impressive. Yeah, it's a very good start or a very good race uh, from von Krusenfreiner. I mean, if you think back to the European champs, he had a really good race going on there and he lost a lot of time in the second last control maybe. He could have been very high up the result list already there. So you could see that the potential is here and that he will be one of the runners uh, we will be talking about in future sprint races. Yeah, I'm absolutely certain of it. And, and a big part of missing last season is that we've seen already in the European Champs, and I'm sure we'll see in this World Championships as well, a lot of young athletes who, who maybe would have made their senior debuts last year, or maybe making them this year, who are gonna kind of seeming to kind of burst on the scene, but um, we haven't been able to see their progression um, through missing out on last season. So there, there could well be a few new, new names and new faces in amongst the mix, which personally I think is always very, very exciting to see. It's always great to see new um, people kind of pushing the, the older athletes and really challenging them and really having some success. But Algirdas Bark Vicious has, uh, is the closest one to Isaac von Krusenfreiner at the moment. Only five seconds behind and looks very, very quick through those uh, very short controls. And now, Jonas, as you've already said, using this bit of road to really uh, have a good look at the map, although uh, it does seem to be... I was, I was just saying that and he wasn't looking at the map and now he is back in there again and maybe just checking out all the different routes on these few different, uh, the short controls here. Mm. But the, the mean, control he just punched was, sorry, go with it. Yeah, I mean, usually in a race you have many controls or a few controls where you have 10 or 12 seconds where you're just running and you have some time and you can read ahead. But in this race, this is actually the own po only part uh, I see at least where it's very clear that okay now you have to use it now you have this uh, you even have like 20 25 seconds time to really prepare what's coming and if you're not using it um, you will lose time in the on the coming controls you really have to do that Yep, but uh, here at the start, another of the favourites for today's race, the European knockout sprint ch uh, silver medalist. Sorry, I was about to upgrade him to a gold. Uh, Joey Haddon, we know he's very, very quick. He took his first win at the World Cup in the middle distance in Laufen. Uh, so he really has the, the pace and is starting to get more experience to be able to uh, run this very competitively. So we will watch out for him. Meanwhile, we've got Daniel Hubben here on his way to the 15th control. And we can also see he is, uh, he's, he's been dropping a bit, dropping kind of 10 seconds between nine and 12. So looks like Daniel Hubman is still losing time compared to Von Cruz and Fuerna here. And this looks like it's going to be the, the first time in, a, in five years in a world champ sprint that Daniel Hubman is going to be beaten. And looks like he will be solidly beaten, I think, here today with only a few controls left. But going back to your point, I think you, you're talking about the, the few seconds of, of actually getting to read the map between 9 and 10. I think what the course setters, the course planners have done really well is put those few controls very close together. For example, like 18, 19, 20 before that route choice 2021. 20, so you have to be uh, in contact with the map just to make sure you've got 19 and 20 all in the right place, all done. And it means you just don't have time to look ahead and really plan those other routes. And I feel like the course setters have really been tricky, have really been trying to push the the athletes to their extremes by setting a course like this. And Florian Hovald is down, but uh, we will see where he's gonna go. He's gonna go into a medal position, I think, here at the finish. Hopefully that fall won't have cost him that place. So as you can see, um, he may just sneak in ahead of his teammate, Ricardo Rankan here. He's gonna be slower than Von Krusenfreiner again, but Florian Hovald now into the finish here. 
He's got a few more metres of running to go. The Swiss cowbells are there out to cheer him along and we'll see where he's going to go. Is it going to be second? Is it going to be third? Florian Hovold into the finish and he goes into that second place there just two seconds ahead of Ricardo Rankin. So still nobody uh, is able to beat that great early time from Isaac von Krusenfreiner as uh, Florian Hovold just tries you know, so he's absolutely spent right at the end of that race. And we have the first of the Czechs out here, Jakub Blonek. But uh, I'm sure we will see him around on the course. But here, Matthias Kiberts. He won the European Champs knockout sprint. He is a former, of course, sprint world champion as well. And you should always count Matthias Kibberts uh, in the favourites whenever he starts a race as well. But back with Algidas Bakvicius here, who very quickly turned around at that control 14. Remember, he was only about five seconds uh, behind the pace. Oh, yeah, that we don't want to cross call. that, especially, <laughs> especially not on camera as well. Um, he was, I said he was only five seconds behind, but now a lot more, plus 16 at control 12, and it's going to be significantly more than that by the time he gets to this 15th control. And that shows to me he's got some pace, but maybe not the orienteering speed when it got really technical. Yeah, that's a good analysis. But still, I think, I mean, he he's 30 seconds behind, but he's still on fifth place. And... Um, you talked about uh, runners that progressed during the last year, maybe. It seemed that he can be one of them, because uh, fifth place at this point, it's not that bad. And um, the time differences, they will be bigger than in other sprint races here, that's for sure. So behind Joe Haddon here. Punching this eighth control. But he is yet and still not going to take the lead away from Von Krusenfreiner. Goes into second place, only four seconds down though. So Joey Haddon has made a pretty good start. And this looks like Daniel Hoodman. Yep, it is into the finish now. Daniel Hoodman, the defending world champion. It's not been quite his day today. And we can see he's about 30 seconds down, which will push him out of the medals unless he has an absolute mm. flying run in here. But, but if, you look at, if you look at his split times, he loses 30 seconds to control 12. And from there, mm. it's nothing more. So it's really that he lost the time in the beginning of the race. And as soon as it got tricky and you had to use this kind of middle distance like uh, orienteering in the, in the sprint race, he didn't lose. Yeah, he lost one more seconds from there. Um, so it was the first part for him that made the difference. Mm. Yeah, I think that's that's a really good point to make there and reflects what we know as Daniel Hoodman's strengths. So you really need to have quite a quick first section, I think, in order to be up there with the contenders. Jakob Glonek, oh, is the only one to have gone that way round to number nine? And I'm not sure that was quite right. But it goes fourth, and a good start there for the Czech athlete. Actually, that was quite a good way to go. I think maybe everybody else went back the same way because they'd, they'd spotted the control maybe on their way into number eight. They wanted to go back that familiar way, but that was still a good uh, route choice from the Czech. Now, here's a familiar site for uh, sprint fans. Jekyll Lucel uh, has featured a lot here in Man and back in the Swiss team again. His, here is Wojtek Kral, though. He 
He's the fifth to last starter. But psyching himself up here on the start line, we've got Matthias Kibberts. Just really looking ahead out of that uh, podium, looking ahead to the start controls, trying to figure out, uh, already be in the zone for, for what he's going to be doing. Axeli Rohula here from Finland. His World Champs debut. And uh, the Finns are one of those nations who really started, I think, to uh, specialise their teams, specialise into either the sprint or the forest discipline. Same kind of with the, a lot of the Norwegian runners as well. And uh, I think it's starting to pay off for both of those nations too. Although Rohula here dropping down the leaderboard. But here you can really say, you know, if you've, we've got the top 20 runners are within 20 seconds of the lead. People aren't losing many, uh, you know, big amounts of time in that first part of the course. The, the here is where, the, in the fort is where they're losing much bigger parts of time, which we, of course, would expect. Yeah. And it can and be uh, seen here from Algirdas Barkovicius. Yeah, he is can, kind of done the reverse hoopman here. He lost almost no time in the beginning, but then started to lose control from con uh, time from control 12 to the finish. I like that, a reverse <laughs> hoopman. <laughs> but it, it, it makes sense, it makes sense. So you can see, really see the different runners having to, playing to the, you know, the different parts of the course, playing to their different strengths. And, and I think the winner will be the one who is able to do both parts really, really well. So Buck Vicious hit there into seventh spot currently. Oh, Joey had on. Hasn't quite got that together and losing a few seconds there at control number 14. We, we were seeing lots of kind of the earlier starters making some hesitations at that point. But recently, much more recently, we've seen everybody having quite a lot of flow through that area. So it's going to be interesting to see whether that, that's, you know, certainly a few seconds miss for Joey Haddon. And it could end up being a few seconds in it as well but Hadon is going to be behind von Krusenfwerne here into this 15th control and we can see he's made of just losing a few seconds here and there and goes 12 seconds behind it's looking better and better for von Krusenfwerne but we still have a good uh, few runners still to go good 10 plus runners coming after Joey Haddon. Mm, talking about one of the good runners to come, Emil Svensk, the European champion, and Thomas Krifta from the Czech Republic. So Thomas Krifta here out and making his uh, World Champs debut, but we're behind Tim Robertson here defending silver medalist by only remember you only uh, got that silver by one second he was one second off the gold there in Latvia three years ago and he's certainly one who's going to be very very glad to see that the sprint disciplines have been included in this world championships and he's the closest to von Krusenfwerner at the moment two seconds behind and looking very strong through this uh, part of the race Just looking at the ease that he is at rounding those corners and now we'll get a few meters to stretch his legs. Jakob Glonek here. And we can see he is again dropping a few seconds, but pretty good. Here. And in fact he's gonna go into fourth place. And we can see he has lost quite 12 seconds between 9 and 12 it's we haven't actually seen any of the, really of any of the route choices between 12 to 13 which is the, one of the ones we kind of picked out in the analysis right at the the start of the competition okay Matthias Kiba is narrowly avoiding collision with a cyclist But you can see really trying to read the map for these few little controls in this park section. <laughs> but 
But Kibbutz, I think, will have lost some time. Quite a few seconds here as he was already behind von Krusen at the control previously. So Matthias Kibbert has not made the best start here. Yeah, and especially, I mean, we know that uh, von Krusen he didn't lose time in the end either compared to the other runners. We barely have seen one runner faster than him from control 12 to the finish. Um, so it looks really good for him at this point of the, of the competition. Yeah, he must be having a nervous wait now to uh, to see whether anyone's going to beat him or who the first person's going to be. I think starting that early on, you're going to expect that someone's going to overtake you. But yeah, yeah, you see here that uh, Kibbutz did exactly the same uh, mistakes here in the route race as Hoopman has done in the beginning of the race. Okay, back to the start now with uh, Wojtek Kral. He's won two out of the three knockout sprints on the World Cup circuit. He was ninth at the European Champs sprints, but has yet to win a World Champs medal. Will this be his day on home soil in front of a home crowd? A lot of expectation on these Czech athletes, including Thomas Krivda here. Oh, and he is looking like he's had a very, very quick start and will only be a few seconds, I think, behind von Krusenfreine here. So, Thomas Krivda is six seconds behind, in fact, the same time as his teammate Klonek there. And you can hear the click of the cameras as he passes through this park. So, good start for those two Czech athletes. And here's Joey Hadorn at the finish. And he has dropped, yeah, dropped some more time here. He was only 12 seconds behind at control 15, but now plus 38. And that will have kicked him out of a, a medal position at this point, even when he just finishes. Yeah, look, we can look there. He's going to drop behind his two teammates, Hovald and Rankan, and Hoodman, the three teammates. So Joey Hadorn, I think, is going to be disappointed with the last part of his race and goes into fifth place. Equal fifth place. But I think we've got Sweden, Switzerland, 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 Switzerland currently uh, at the finish. But here's someone who can maybe figure here. Tim Robertson, although he's going the different way here round to this uh, control. But you can see he's only a few seconds behind, behind von Krusenfuerna here, here and a strong finish mm, and this could be very it, good it's a bit longer but it's uh, only a few meters so it's still okay and he looked very uh, distinct when taking this route so he didn't yeah hesitate or anything it was well planned and he could just continue in the same direction so it looks good for Tim Robertson yeah I think so so he was about five seconds behind it's gonna be a few more now but could well be you're just punching that in second place so second place there for tim robertson he is the defending silver medalist and uh, the first of our checks is here at the finish Jakob blonek is going to be splitting up i think some of these swiss athletes and uh, the czech runner is going to finish inside the top five there we go he goes fourth place for Jakob blonek and that's a great great result here especially on his walk debut but from one Czech runner to another. And this is the best of the Czech sprinters on paper anyway. Wojtek Kral, who has very quickly, I was, I was going to say learned how to master the, uh, the knockout sprint uh, format, but wasn't quite as good at the European champs last month and is nearly going to miss the control there. Just... I think going a few steps down a different uh, track, but managed to recover and he is a few seconds down and he's going to be slower than his two Czech teammates at this point. So not the best start then from Wojtek Kral, but still within that touching distance. But we, we can see, as you, you already said, Jonas von Krusenfuerna just not really dropping Hardly anything. Oh, and a mistake, yeah, there from Jekyll Yeah, he all 
almost forgot to punch or to go to control 3. He was on his way to control 4 already there. And I mean, that's a quite a big mistake if you see that. Yeah, as you mentioned, then no one was faster than uh, von Krusenstein, or at least not much faster. And then if you lose 10 seconds in this first part of the race, which is not very difficult, that's that's a big disadvantage. So we're beside Kasper Fosser here, the uh, European uh, bronze medalist in the sprint. And we can see from controls four and five, he's five seconds slower than von Krusenfreiner at this point. He will, uh, of course, later in these championships be defending his long distance silver medal that he won a couple of years ago in Norway, having competed in the Junior World Champs the same season as well. And Fossa goes fourth, six seconds down. So we're looking back here at the slope up towards control 15. It looks like Thomas Krivda has taken the Tim Robertson route, I think, if we can see him very shortly climbing up this hill. There he is. Oh, and he's dropped. And he looks tired, I think, mm. uh, going, uh, uh, having gone up that hill. And you can see that the speed that he was carrying through the first few controls has dropped right back now. So 12th spot there. Krivda probably not going to match the feats of Jakob Blonik to get into the top five. Here's Emil Svensk, though, the European sprint champion. Mm, that looks Ooh, good for Svensk. Oh, and this looks very good. So Emil Svensk is the first to go faster than Isaac von Krusenfreiner, but only by a second. Is the European champion going to back it up with a world champs win as well? But Tim Robertson there is now into the finish. And he has dropped a bit of time in the second part of the course, but not too bad at all. And we're going to see if he can get into a silver medal position here. Tim Robertson, the defending silver medalist, and he looks like he's going to end up in the same position again. Tim Robertson's been working hard for this race for the last few years and back into that silver medal position. So 13 seconds off the pace there. Tim Robertson into a great silver medal position at the moment. But lots more fast runners to come, including Emil Svensk, who we saw just there. But we're waiting for Jerka Lucel, and we already saw that he made that mistake between controls two and three. Just almost looked like he wasn't, was going to miss it out, but then luckily did remember. And he's also been dropping seconds uh, throughout the course, just dropping back compared to the leader von Krusenfreiner at every kind of single control. Mm. I mean, it's a tough situation for him. He knows that he has done this mistake in the beginning. It's kind of, even if you try to move on with your thoughts, it's still is stuck in your head that you have uh, had this unnecess totally unnecessary mistake in the beginning and he lost 10, 15 seconds there. And it's so hard to, to turn it around again and win back 15 seconds in a sprint race. So Yannick Michels is on his hunt for his first World Champs medal, but he's 10 seconds behind at this point. He has won sprints uh, in the World Cup circuit, but uh, and was a fourth place in the last Sprint World Champs back in 2018. And here's our last starter, Max Petter Bamer for Sweden having qualified fastest in his heat. So our last starter right now into the control. Mm, and you see that uh, Robertson lost, uh, let's say, five seconds there by running all the way around. 
very good route choice by Isaac von Krusenstjerne. It's a pity that we haven't seen more of uh, von Krusenstjerne. I think we started the, the broadcast exactly the time he came to the finish. Um, so we didn't really see his route choices, but obviously he did a great race all the way. Yeah. And maybe was was taking it easy on the on the qualifier, and that may be why he's being so quick on this final. You, you never really know at, at this point. And Max Petterbamer, yeah, we can follow him through. So that's our last starter through our first TV split, and he's 12 seconds behind. So. All of our runners are now out on the course, been through control number nine, and it's just this last technical part to come as well. So with all the runners past TV split number one, we can have a little look at the standings. Emil Svensk, European champion in our current lead, but our, our leader at the finish, Isaac von Krusenfrenner, his early speed still stacking up against all the rest. Oh, and some walking here for oh. Thomas Krivda Good as he's wrong. got to figure out the way through yeah. to the finish. Yeah, but you can see that he lost a lot of time already to control 21 there. Um, so I think he lost a bit of concentration and focus. And, uh, you know, you've got that really fast speed you can see at the first few controls, maybe that that was too fast for him uh, yeah. and then it was kind of punished after afterwards yeah maybe but I mean you you also get punished if you don't push hard in the beginning and lose time um, so it's hard to say but you we could see his body language that he yeah he was not really there physically so Emil Svensk he's been close to a second each time Uh, camera perspective we haven't seen before it's kind of difficult I think to he see just ran completely past did he not run completely past the control I think he well, I think he went past it something is because he went here. up the, he yeah. went he must have missed something here here I think he's by control 13 then because he went he literally ran past the control because he went up the slope yeah, yeah. and then along and then yeah he literally ran past it he might come back oh here. my goodness me is he gonna come back no. let's have a let's look at the mistake it's on the way to control 13 going there all the way up there we've oh. seen him no oh, it was control 13 but he didn't punch it did he I don't, I don't oh my no so now no, he he's stuck in the it. tunnel but so that what a root choice to control number 13 as well so now he's caught by Yannick Michels. <laughs> yeah, so he's lost a whole minute there. We can see Yannick Michels has mm -hmm. caught Emil Svensk, and that's going to give, uh, I'm sure, Yannick a bit of a boost. But I, I can't really figure out. He, because he ran too far along the the stream on the way to 13, and should have cut because you can cut back ground and go under the tunnel. So he ran much further there. And then we've already seen him come up here and then he ran past the control that they're about to punch now. Uh, so he, he's already been here before. <laughs> wow. Okay, that's quite, that's quite a big mistake. But Wojtek Kral now is back here at the finish. But he has lost a lot of time here. He's not going to make it. The Czech favourite. He's not even going to be the fastest of the Czechs here at the finish. He's going to make it into the top ten though. And Wojciech Kral goes eighth there. And he'll be probably pretty disappointed in that. And uh, if we take a look at the split times and the result list here, it's more or less only Yannick Michels and Kasper Fosser who have a chance to uh, take the gold medal away from Isaac von Krusenstern. And here is Kasper Fosser on the way to the last control. Or second last control. Here is Kasper Fosser, and uh, he's late. If we're looking at these split times, Kasper Fosser. 
And now you can see he's really trying to attack these last few meters of the course, going up the slope here under this tunnel. But I think it's going to be too late for Casper Foster. Is he going to get a medal, though? Is he going to go close to the time of Tim Robertson? So Casper Foster really striding hard all the way through to the finish. And Casper Foster will not match von Kruzenfrenner. He's going to go second, seven seconds behind Isaac von Kruzenfrenner. Collapses at the finish line and Casper Foster goes second. So we're going to, we've got to wait now for yeah, Yannick Michels will be through very, very shortly. But um, our first look at von Kruzenfrenner, uh, all smiles there for him as he sees more and more of the top athletes who we're used to seeing go slower than his time. This could be a real turn up for the books if we can see Von Cruz and Puerna take this world title. The standings are split two. We can see Von Cruz and Puerna those 11 seconds ahead of Tim Robertson. Casper Fosso must have had a quite a quick last finish to be able to pull up and finish ahead of Tim Robertson there. So he's in current silver medal position. We've got Yannick uh, Mikkels on the way to the finish very shortly. We can already hear people cheering for him. He's looking for his first ever World Champs medal. So we've just got two runners well, we know Emil Svensk is, that mistake is too much, but Yannick Mikkels and Max Petterbehm and Max Petterbehm are too far down as well. We're waiting now for Yannick Mikkels into the finish. And uh, maybe Isaac von Krusenfreiner getting ready for a big mm. celebration. I think they're looking at the tracking there to see what's going on. Well, I mean... See. And there we go. They think they've, they think they've got it now. I mean, what I think should happen that he can catch 15 seconds uh, compared to Van Cruz and Kuena. Yeah. It's just not possible. 15 seconds is a lot, and uh, Van Cruz and Kuena didn't do any mistakes uh, in the end. Uh, I don't think he did any mistakes during the whole course. Uh, that's a big surprise that he is winning this race uh, 23 years old and already world champion very soon. So Yannick Mikkels and Emil Svensk both here on this last part. But I feel like having they've come through the through the tunnel that they'll, that they'll have lost some time actually. Yeah. And yeah. It will be tied between Mikkels and uh, Tim Robertson for the bronze medal. So Yannick Mikkels then being chased by Emil Svensk, who he's caught up a minute, and we're going to see where the seconds go. He's going to be trying to race here for a medal, really pushing all the way. Yannick Mikkels from Belgium to see if he can earn his first World Champs medal, and he's going to be just out of it, I think. He is. He goes into fourth place. Another fourth place for Mikkels. He is not happy with that. Tim Robertson earns that bronze medal, and Mikkels is gutted there on the finish line that he's going to be out of it. Celebrations, though, for Isaac von Krusenfreiner for the Swedish team with the youngster just taking that win. We've got Kasper Fosser into second place and we've got Tim Robertson into third. But, oh, Mikkels is uh, understandably very, <laughs> really not happy with himself there, I think. But the celebrations can begin for von Krusenfreiner. And what a great, you know, what great things to see a, a new runner here. But here's our last starter. Here is Max Petterbehmer. His last starter by virtue of qualifying fastest in his heat. Not the first person to have gone round there, but with 20 seconds behind at control 21. He looks like he will be out of the medal spot. Can but get in the top five, top ten. Yes, though. still a very good race by Max Peter Beimer. Only 20 seconds behind at control 21. So he still has a chance for top six, top five maybe.
So Max Petter Bamer, we'll see where he will end up. And he goes into fifth spot there. So great result, top five then for Max Petter Bamer, the last starter. We didn't really see any of him out there with all the attention being focused on uh, Mikkels and uh, Emil Svensk as the defending European champion. But Max Petter Bamer rewarded there with a fifth position, a podium yeah. position at we his. Well, a sprint race. We didn't see a lot of Max Peter Bremer, but we did, didn't see a lot of uh, the world champion either, Isaac von Krusenstern. I mean, we, we can't even say what he has done uh, good in this race because we haven't <laughs> seen anything of him. Uh, it's a pity that we started the broadcast uh, that late or that he was, wasn't very good in the qualification, let's put it that way. Um, big surprise for me. I mean, he was... Uh, showing his potential at the European Champs uh, when he missed just before the finish. Um, but this is just mm. uh, a different thing to win the World Championships uh, with, with seven seconds. And you see here, it's Casper uh, Foster. I mean, he's 22. Uh, Tim Robertson on third. Maybe, I mean, also a bit of a surprise, even if he got the silver medal three years ago. But he wasn't very very good in in at the european champs um and <laughs> yeah what a surprise <laughs> <laughs> but some names making the top 20 ricardo skelet there the first starter from italy um great to see him there i think janis brenek as well uh making the kind of a top 20 spot there as we kind of work our way down uh the results list oh and a disqualification for joey Haddon. Didn't see that one come in, so that we can round up there those top. And now we can maybe see what happened to Von Cruz and Fuena. Yeah, I mean, we have seen the beginning of him. At least uh, he made many good decisions here in the first part. Uh, we've so seen it compared to Hoopman and also Kibbutz. He was choosing right here, control five, uh, and also to control seven when he turned back again. Here, I guess that Casper Foster loses one or two seconds compared to the other ones. All of them going to the right here. It wasn't the shortest one, but it seems to be the fastest one. Let's see now at control 12. So here is already seen these tunnels. I think I think a good route choice there from 11 to 11 for mm. uh, von Cruz and Fuena. No one here took the perfect route to control 13, or at least the shortest one. See that Robertson and uh, von Cruz and Fuena, same route choice here, to control 4, 13 and 14. They were very close all the way. And Robertson goes all the way around the outside mm -hmm. on that one. Here maybe we'll pick not the good the route choice. Ooh. Yeah, but may not the shortest one to 21, but still a good one. Casper um, Fossa picks well to 21. Yeah. And then I mean yeah, he Robertson loses loses a lot of time on that route choice in 23. He didn't have the perfect race okay. in Cruz and Fuena, but that's what I mentioned uh, in the beginning. It's not about uh, choosing the perfect route to every control in this race. There's so many decisions to take and you have two or three or even four route choices, uh, possible route choices to ev almost every control. And it's just about not taking a really bad one uh, at one point. It's unbelievable. I'm pretty surprised, but uh, yeah, I'm really, really happy. Your first world champion. You are running the first uh, race in the world uh, in the world championship, mm -hmm. and now you are a world champion. Was it a perfect race for you? Yeah, it was really good. I felt uh, I was under control the whole way, and 
I was in control uh, with the map uh, all the way and uh, I was a little bit tired in towards the end but I pushed uh, all I got and uh, yeah, I'm really really happy. How did you enjoy navigation through the walls and the tunnels? It was really fun, uh, it was pretty tricky to to find the right route choices uh, through the tunnels and uh, but we had a quite uh, good map uh, uh, beforehand so we could uh, study the whole area and uh, it was pretty similar to this uh, competition map so uh, yeah, it's uh, it's crazy. Uh, did you get a bit nervous when you were getting towards uh, yeah. the goal? Because there were some pre pretty tricky legs towards the end of the, uh, of the course. And I suppose you knew that you are running a good race? Yeah, it's, uh, it was really nervous. I was, uh, it's really hard to know how good your race was when uh, I was entering the finish because the best one is starting last. And uh, yeah, then I saw all the split times coming up and it looked really good and uh, it uh, it's unbelievable I managed to grab the, the goal. Yeah, it ended, it ended perfectly for you. Uh, congratulations, Isaacs, and good luck for the rest of the week. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you for the video. Wow, some great words there from Isaac von Kruzenfreiner. And I think that just reflects kind of what, what we imagine his whole afternoon to have been like with a nervous wait uh, being the one of the very, very early starters in this final um, not really knowing how well you've performed, but really preparing well, using the old maps to, to be familiar with this terrain, using getting lots of information from the model and from the qualifier mm. to just put together, as you said, enough good route choices to be able to, to, you know, to take the win today. And it's not only the, the old maps he was talking about. I'm very sure that they adapted the map uh, with like uh, satellite pictures and pictures from the area they found on the internet. And uh, that's wh what he me like means when he's saying that they had a good map to prepare. Mm. I mean, every team is making their own maps uh, of sprint areas. And obviously the Swedish team succeeded very well. So that looks good also for the women's race for the <laughs> Swedish team. Yeah, I think you're right. And um, yeah, they'll have used, as you say, all that information to try and to try and be the, the best prepared. And they've been, you know, this is the main race of the whole year. So they've really put in the hours to try and make sure that they turn up here and, and be in best shape going to other uh, training camps where maybe I know a lot of the athletes have been out in France training in similar kind of castle fortress style maps and, and spending some time in the Czech Republic ahead um, of these races as well but I mean some great drama to see a new world champion crowned and hopefully we can see some another fantastic race coming up uh, in the women's I think you've already seen in background of some of the shots that some of the women have already started their courses So yes, we uh, will leave the drama for the men's race to the side at, at this point and move on to the women's competition, where again, the top 15 from each of the three heats from this morning's qualifier have made their way through to this final. And we can have a look at the course map. It's quite similar to the men's in a lot of ways, but as we might expect, a little bit shorter. Jonas. Mm -hmm. uh, we have quite a similar start here. Uh, one, two, three, those short controls Four, but then a bit of shorter option here to control five and six. Uh, it looks easy, as I mentioned. It's quite easy technically, but still we have seen that you can actually lose time when you go the wrong way around the buildings here. Uh, eight, nine, the same situation as we had in the men's race. Use the time to read the map and try to figure out what tunnels you will use uh, from control 11 to 12. Um, here again, it's quite similar to the men's course. Uh, control 14 is the one we have seen as the TV control in the men's race. And then it's a bit shorter here. Um, also, the women, they have a map flip at control 16. And then they go back to the finish. Uh, quite the same route to control 19. Not exactly the same control, but it's the same route choice. So. It's quite similar to the men's race. Yep, and we'll be seeing them at uh, those similar points. As we said, a little bit shorter than for the women's, uh, 3.5 uh, 
kilometers. They've got this 90 second uh, start interval and the 40 meters of climb. But we've seen some of them being quite steep as you go up onto these fortress kind of battlements, I guess, uh, in and around everything. So let's have a look, a little bit more of a, a deeper look at some of these aspects um, of the course and the different route choices that can be taken, the uh, analysis of what might be quickest, what might be slowest. And it's a case of trying to take as many good route choices as you can. So again, they start off with a few small controls here and then you, the use of some artificial barriers means some route choices through to the next few. And then again, we will see them through this park area that they've got the same controls as the men here. So it's a case of trying to avoid these barriers. And again, we know the blue one is the shortest, the green only five meters further, but you've got that long straight bit down the side of the building all the way along the road where you can really kind of get up some speed and, and also crucially have a look at the map as well. And I think the, the reason why we have seen so many men choosing the right, uh, the, the green option is because you have to turn less. There's only one, uh, yeah, it's a big turn, but it's only one of them. And it's much harder to guess, uh, first of all, guess which one is closer, is shorter, if you have two or three turns on the route, and also it slows you down, of course. So from the park again they head back they head out to the fortress a few meters of being able to look at the the route choices uh, try and figure out whether the controls are kind of on the top of the building at the, at the bottom of the fortress and again it looks like it's going to be the size well i don't know people went very different routes on this one very few people got the tunnel underneath with the green and the orange and the purple sorry which we think are the yeah. best route We've seen uh, from Cruz and Quena taking the orange route 609 meter compared to the 547 in purple. So it's still 60 meter. You could make it shorter there. That's uh, that's a few seconds. Um, yeah, and so if you turn the right here at this point where the runner's going there with the the purple and green, that's the shortest route that you want to take. So the decision right at the beginning of the course here of that leg, sorry. And this just gives you a view of what some of these big tunnels are like. And these controls and come so thick and fast, you have to be aware of which direction you're going very, very quickly. And the tunnels are kind of tricky because usually you have uh, the possibility to look around and figure out other buildings. You can see on the way to the next control, you can see the terrain, the contours. But when you're in this tunnel, you really have the tunnel view. I mean, you can't see anything to the left or to the right. You can just see the light in the end of the tunnel <laughs> and nothing else. And it makes it much harder to prepare. And you have to use uh, the one, like the second you come out to relocate and figure out out all the buildings around and the contours. It's kind of uh, unusual that you have it in a sprint race, at least in this X10. Yeah, and the fact that it's just, just dark in there as well and just got to, to be able to read the map for those few seconds whilst your eyes adjust. And the runners will know, the, well, the course set has said generally running on the lower level is it's better underfoot and is a bit quicker as a general rule and a lot of the athletes if they've been clever will have kind of tried to figure that out um on the qualifier on the model as well they've got the map flip at control number 16 and then a few more routes through as we could see a similar finish compared to the men's course so that's a view of the whole of the women's Once again, a lot of twists and turns, a few very short controls followed by a long control as well. And that really, just having those controls coming at you very, very quickly every few seconds or so means it's really hard to kind of plan ahead and really feel like you're getting into this course. I think the, the course planners, the course setters have done a really good job in making it a very technical and tricky 
final, not only with, with the terrain being quite tricky and exciting as well, but adding in those artificial barriers, as we've already seen, and just by making uh, lots of short controls as well. So again, we'll look round down this start list. For the women's, they've got a 90 second start interval and the order is by how they've qualified. So those who've just qualified will be starting first. So we're looking for those heading to, kind of towards the end to be the best ones. Any of the kind of early runners, maybe, maybe an Isaac von Krusenferner who we can look out for doing very, very fast uh, kind of in the early stages of this race. Well, well, let's hope for Ida Hapala that uh, the same thing happens to her <laughs> as it happened to Isaac uh, von Krusenkerner. But I doubt it, actually. Um, we have the favourites uh, in the very end of the race. Elena Ros, Karunil Olsson, uh, Theresa Janosikova, Tove Alexanderson. But also we have the comeback uh, of Maya Alm, which will be very interesting, even though she had problems with the concussion the last week. So she just made it back to this race. It'll be interesting to follow her. Yeah, it will be very interesting. She's a four times defending world champion at the sprint. She is uh, has just provided a masterclass in how to do sprint orienteering. But yeah, as you mentioned, she had a concussion, I think, about six weeks ago and put a post on her social media today saying she just feels very... She actually used the word frightened to say how uh, how she feels ahead of this race knowing how little preparation she's had and then and i guess there will be athletes actually kind of in similar positions from different nations with some countries being able to do more and and some countries being able to do less preparation uh in terms of all the the covid guidelines that different countries have had um i certainly know like the brits weren't able to get to the uh, european championships so for many of them this will be their, their first uh, major international race since 2019 uh, and various other countries have had different restrictions as well meaning either limits on training locally or limits on travel things like that that just kind of adds maybe an extra dimension um, to these races we're looking at the young Turkish ath athlete Elif Goka Avci to the first split but you can see already a minute uh, and eight seconds down at this point mm, she did a good job in the qualification but uh, in this first part to lose a minute is a lot of time yeah and it looks like it's Vendula Hochichkova who's got the leading kind of time at control eight where we're getting the splits now but Sandra Grossberger as well is looking uh, fast So Josephine Lind, as I mentioned, all of the uh, Danes managing to qualify for this final. One of uh, six nations who achieved that. Laura Rammstein there for Austria. And we saw Maya Sienoya uh, uh, previously in picture. She took a silver, uh, Maya Sienoya took a silver medal in um, the Sprint World Cup uh, in the Czech Republic back in 2018. So we know she's doing well. Vandula Hochichkova then here into the finish. And we know from kind of the early splits, I think she's, Still our leader at control number eight, which is our first TV split. So Vandula Hochichkova, who from previous kind of results and races hasn't seemed to me to be much of a sprinter at all, but has uh, been doing pretty well in these first sections. Although we can see now from controls 14, 18, it dropping back compared to the leader. I think the graph is wrong there. There should be a minus yeah, and the plus 20. <laughs> Okay, so we'll take green to mean minus because, yeah, look, we can hear she's going to go and uh, set the new fastest time here. Vendula Hochichkova, the first of the Czech women to go through. And the last woman out today will be a Czech, Teresa Janoshikova. But Hochichkova here into the finish goes 
fastest by 24 seconds. 15 at 29 and a great result for her at this point. So let's have a look at some replays here. Yep, this is to control nine. So you run here exactly the tunnel that you have the chance to take away from control 11 towards control 12. So you really have a chance to prepare yourself there. And here we see she lost quite a lot of time Ooh, there yeah. to control 11. And then we again choosing another route to control mm -hmm. 12. Yes, that might uh, put pay to her lead, but she is the leader at uh, the finish currently. Now, someone here who could uh, score a really good early time, that was Natalia Gempler. We'll get back to her in a mo. But Mail Bovier, French athlete, is out of the start. Again, all the French uh, athletes managed to qualify for this final. And this long run out towards the start control, really giving these athletes a chance to kind of look into the map, get those first few controls under their belt, having pictured those, maybe have a chance to look at the spread of the, the first part of the course. They do have a, a map. They've got a 10 end map over, as we said, at control number 16. So maybe they will get a chance to kind of see some of the shape of the course and what the challenges they're going to be presented with. Josephine Lind then here towards this park area where we have our first TV split. And we've not really seen anybody going any ways other than this one, where you make this 180 turn around the fence. These mm. great use of artificial fences to add that extra challenge. Yeah, we, we talked about it. It's uh, a few turns and of course it's one of these moments where you get a lot of time to read ahead. Uh, it's, I mean, it's just uh, following the building there for like 10 seconds so you get a chance to calm down a little bit and prepare the route choices coming later in the race. Lind punches a control fifth place then. So again, at the pre-start here, Lena Strand getting ready to go. Her best sprint race comes from her fifth place at the World Champs in 2018. She will be defending her long silver medal though later uh, this week. mistake there and Sandra Grosberger seems to have lost her advantage that uh, that she she gained from the the good route choice mm -hmm. through to control 11 uh, she, she definitely lost that one there different route choices yeah she could actually have uh, continued there and then go through the tunnel and up the same way that she went up now then she would not have to turn and maybe had lost one or two seconds and now she lost for sure five or six seconds yeah so she was in the she's currently second place at the finish nine seconds behind uh Hochichkova, so Hochichkova still leading then So control number 13 for Florence Hanauer.
sorry, that was control number 12. Now she's into control number 13 and back the way, uh, straight away, no hesitation to go back through the tunnel. And then we'll take the this little ramp all the way up to the top of the fortress. And that's actually control 16. She just passed there. And this looks like a pretty good start there for the French woman. Well, she was 10 seconds, 12 seconds behind at, at Control 8, which is our first TV split. But we, you know, we've seen um, Korczyczkova and Grosberger make mistakes there. So she's rewarded with a new leading time here. And I think that's a result of some good route choices being made. Having seen on the, you know, the GPS that... Uh, Hitchcock of a certain losing time round control number 11. Maya Sienoya then here on her way to the seventh control. She's got some good sprint results from the Czech Republic back when the World Cup was here in 2018. In her second place there. And again, she's part of a, a good crop of uh, Finns who are getting good at sprinting. So see you know smoothly through there. And she will be slightly behind Hochichkova, but still within touching distance, I think. So she goes quicker than Hanauer, who has taken the lead at control 14. I said we're gonna speak about right here. Here's Natalia Gempela. Russian, former uh, sprint world medalist, so the second place at the World Champs in 2017 in Estonia, and it's going to be a bit of an unknown how she's going to perform here today. Yeah, I mean, uh, she did quite a good job at the European Champs, and she came, came seventh. Uh, she was on maternity leave earlier this year, so it's quite a good comeback there. Uh, and definitely one of the bigger names early in this race. Yep, she's got the experience to be able to kind of keep cool on this stage and just not let the pressure get to her. Maybe she's got actually kind of fewer expectations on herself having come back from maternity leave, as you mentioned. Talking about one of the bigger names early in the race. This is another one. Lina Strand from Sweden. Fourth at the European Championships. Fifth at the World Championships uh, 2018. Yeah, and uh, got a, her first individual um, World Champs medal at the last World Champs a couple of years ago. Taking that silver in the long. Can she add a sprint medal now to her collection? So behind Natalia Gempler. And she seems to be moving pretty well. Down this road, looking very, very closely at the map. and just shortens her strides to get navigate around the artificial barrier. And this looks very good. Mm, this looks like a great start from Gempela. Yeah, seems to be a good start here. Just 27 seconds left to the next control. But still, so far, we haven't seen uh, a perfect race or a very good race uh, as we had it in the... In the mm men's race earlier where we had uh, Isaac von Cruz and Kjerna already in the beginning setting a time that was really really good and here we always had one runner at least at one point losing time so uh, so far there's still uh, a lot of potential to be faster 
And someone who is faster than our current leader, Hochichkova, is Florence Hanauer. And she's coming into the finish. She's going to have a few seconds lead, I think, over the Czech athletes. And not the fastest starts, but she's managed to kind of keep it clean, keep some good route choices in this final section. And she will be rewarded with a new leading time there. So the French woman, Hanauer, goes fastest here and will uh, kick Hochichkova off the leader's chair. She's enjoyed her, her spot there for a few minutes. But uh, so a new leading time then here in the finish. And that's the, the best feedback you can have for uh, kind of an earlier starter here is to be the quickest when you finish. You know there's a lot of fast athletes to come after you, but you know what? There's nothing better than to be the first when you finish. Yeah, that's hard to beat. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, yeah. So we've got Grace Malloy here at the start. Uh, junior World Champs relay gold and two uh, bronzes from the individual disciplines as well, making her senior international debut. I mean, we were talking about having this big gap uh, from the last uh, international races one and a half years ago. Now we have seen many at the European Champs, but the British team is still kind of a surprise for us because they were not able to run there. So it will be a bit, yeah, it will be extra exciting to see them, how they can do today, how they can pe perform today. Yeah, and I think the British team are stronger in the women's class than the men's class at the sprint. So um, we'll see whether any of them are able to make it with uh, Alice Leake is the best of the Brits in, in qualifying. Uh, she's got an eighth place in, from the World Championships in Latvia. She's trying to go uh, better than that here today. But Lena Strand round in this corner and we know they've got a, they've prepared a good map. They've done really good preparations. We know that's what Isaac von Krusen Frenner was kind of thanking when he gave his post-race interview. So let's see if uh, Lena Strand's going to be able to benefit from that as well. It's not going to play off as much in this first section. We can see she's actually being slower than Gempeler here. Um, but I think it'll pay off most when you get to the fortress and all, with all these kind of passages. Although, what a what a, a homemade map can't do is show you where the, all the artificial barriers are. And that, I think, is where um, the athletes are going to be having a few surprises and they're going to be forced to do maybe route choices that they hadn't thought about when they've been preparing. Mm. But in a, I mean, this terrain here or this map is quite extreme because you have all these tunnels and you have the differences in levels you can run on. So it really gives you confidence to have a good map. And I don't, I mean... If we look at this map for the first time, at some points it's hard to figure out where you can get up to the next level, where you can use a tunnel. Uh, is it possi possible to get through there? And these are things you can kind of check and prepare yourself for. Even if, they, uh, if there will be artificial fences, you have this kind of uh, confidence that you know where the tunnels are. So Ingrid Lundner, as you can see, she's refolding her map here. You can maybe shows that she's looking ahead to the controls in the fortress, maybe just taking that time to to plan and to think about what's coming next whilst keeping the speed up on the road there. And we just saw uh, another Norwegian just start, Victoria Heistad Bjornstad. Both of these two young Norwegians making their World Champs debuts. And that's what we, I guess has been maybe a tricky thing for, for a sprinter and a young sprinter with, with a lack of a high level competitions um, w with the fact that there was a uh, world champs that was forest only in 2019. And then of mm. course missing all of 2020. But you've had the Europeans, I guess, and, and other races uh, on the World Cup circuit. Yeah, but uh, I mean, often you need the other runners and you need competition to get feedback on your training. And especially if, when you're a young, young runner and you're not uh, as experienced in knowing where you are when you do a uh, kind of a 
training schedule and you're working on it for several months and you never get feedback it's hard to yeah to know if you're in a good way or if you're not and I, I think that's very difficult but here we see a mistake by Natalia Gempele almost missed this turn here now she has to go to the tunnel not or no she's going up there no the she's going level. up to 14 yeah. yeah but a mistake there at least some hesitation yes but Gempler has had a, <laughs> a really fast start actually despite the hesitation just there you can see she's been just quicker than uh, an hour each time 19 seconds now 37 seconds and that really is quite significant so Gempler had a had just continuing her great run I think here mm, and then we we have to consider that she also had some hesitations there mm. so, so room for here. other people to go faster I think yeah let's see here can play going out on the same route as we have seen uh, from Cruz and Cueno running choosing to run on the grass there not on the path It's just 12, 13, and there we had the hesitation. And I think it's that route choice to 12 that's really put her in good stead, because then you, you're able to flow through 12 and 13. If you're going the, uh, the way that Hanau went, you've got to go via 13 first, then 12, then back. And I think that just, that choice there was very good. And I think this is the first runner we've seen going the different route choice here into control number seven. Going via this park, uh, like longer in the park. But a good thing about the trees being so diffuse is you can really kind of look up and spot where the controls are from quite a long way away, I think, in this park. Mm, but she didn't pick the fastest route here. I think she will lose time on that. She was 13 seconds behind at control number four. So yeah, plus 21 seconds. And I think, and Grace Malloy, we, we didn't see her through that point. She was 11 seconds behind. Cecilia freeberg Kleisner has uh, put in great effort on sprint relay uh, teams for Denmark. Her best individual sprint result comes from the world champs in 2017 with a seventh place. Almost missed there. And Klusner's not going to be far off. So, yes, great start there for Cecilia Friba. Klusner goes into a good second place, only three seconds behind Gempeler. And this is Gempela. I was thinking we must surely soon be seeing her at the finish. And here she is. And just look at the green lights all the way through. Fastest all the way at this point. She's maybe a little bit of a hesitation there, just trying to spot this control. But she is now going to really attack it. And Natalia Gempela has had a fantastic run here at these World Championships. We'll see, though, how it will stack up compared to the others. But... You know, nearly a minute faster than our current leader. Over a minute faster than our current leader, than Hanau. It's a fantastic result. And Gempler has really put down the mark here. Natalia Gempler then, starting from quite a relatively early start position, is going to take a big lead here. So Natalia Gempler goes fastest by a minute and 14 seconds. That just shows how much of a class apart she is compared to those who have already finished and showing her her skill and her speed there Natalia Gempler into the lead that's a very impressive gap mm, as far as we have seen 
Uh, there was only this small hesitation there to control. Um, what was it? 14. Mm -hmm. um, yep. But otherwise, otherwise it seemed to be a quite a good race. Uh, but there are big names to come, and we will see if it was a race to get a medal with. Oh, this is a, a interesting route choice into 14. She's going to stay low between the the two steep walls and then go beyond the control and up the other side. So she'll just kind of probably just passing right that bit we can't see uh, behind all the all the grass, and then we'll climb up this steep slope. But we hadn't seen Lena Strand though through. Uh, this control, control number 14. We can see she's uh, in that current second place, 19 seconds behind Gempler. But we can see Gempler just managed to really have, really kind of have enough speed towards the end of the course as well. So you've tried it, got to try and uh, play that. Here's Grace Malloy. And she's also on her way to control number 14, mm. going to kind of this down route. We can say that she had a great start here into this race. She was only 10 seconds behind Natalia Gampele at control number 11. So after the route choice and no hesitation here. So Grace Malloy then where you can see her climb her way up here and she's got to try and keep her speed going for the whole way, try and push it up all these. She tends to be good through the tough terrain. She's a strong athlete and she's going to go into second place here. So Malloy just got to try and keep it together, keep up the speed on this bit. I, can, I feel like she's not quite looking as smooth as Gempler was uh, through this section. No, but she's fast. She's only 16 seconds. Space. Yeah, she's only 16 seconds behind. And I mean, it's uh, it's not the very beginning of the race anymore. Uh, she has managed to do good, to make good decisions even in this more difficult part and more tricky part. So this looks good for her. I, I guess I'm just trying not to get too far ahead of myself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm helping I'm you with the that. Brits, but uh, yeah, <laughs> there we go. Well, you can tell me when I'm allowed to allowed to cheer on for the Brits. So, um, and I will do that. Lena Strand. Oh, you are going the right way. Yep, there we go. Just a little bit of hesitation on uh -huh. the top here. Oh no, does she know where the control is? But it's it's just yeah, I mean, hidden out of sight. You can see kind of that she lost self-confidence. She was 19 seconds behind the control 14. Then mm, she must yeah. have made a mistake there. And this really affects the, yeah, the confidence. And maybe mm. she did a mistake where she went down too early or something. So then she will double check in uh, on the coming controls if she really has to go down. Yeah, this is a surprise and a shame there for Lena Strand, who will be about a minute down. She'll go, probably go into second place, but you've really got to be much closer than Gempler if you want to end up to Gempler, if you want to end up with a medal around your neck. So Lena Strand there, she started well, but we 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 nice to see some GPS from her. So if we can see some sort of mistake there between controls 14 and 18, because she was within touching distance, and maybe some disappointment there from Strand, but she will. Uh, run I think later in the competition and uh, Cecilia Freeberg clues now back with her this looks like control number 13 and not quite as uh, smooth there a bit of a little hesitation but you can see she's only 10 seconds behind Gempler here and yeah, the, uh, in my opinion it's kind of a difference if you stay at the control and don't move and, and read the map compared to when you move away from the control and then slow down because uh, when she really stops at the control it, it shows you that she she's aware of the fact that she isn't prepared and she won't move until she has made a decision and just to go away a bit uh, and move slowly often makes it worse. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that is true if you've got that especially if you've got that false confidence um that can really really pay but maybe some good kind of 
tactics here potentially to be going the having to go backwards you know do the approach control 14 from the direction you then have to go out to 15 and of course you can't talk about sprint orienteering without talking about this woman Maya Alm she's going to go for number five she says she doesn't feel at all prepared having done very minimal training if any training in the last six weeks since concussion and a little preparations there but here's Grace Malloy into the last couple of controls fighting hard here the multi junior world champs medalist from Great Britain and she's dropped a bit of time from from uh, controls 14 to 18 looking more like 30 seconds now but that's good enough to get her into second place at the finish so Grace Malloy going to push hard to end up in a medal position at the moment lots of quicker runners to go but Grace Malloy on her uh, world champs debut for Great Britain with the, the difficulties that the whole of the British team have had in preparing for these races, not being able to get out to the Czech Republic at all this year until these world championships. Grace Malloy then into the finish. She's dropped a few more seconds though uh, in the final stages of the race, but Grace Malloy is going to go into the second position here at the finish in the Czech Republic here in Terezin. So Grace Malloy takes that second place, 49 seconds behind Natalia Gempela. And there's a pretty yeah, I, good result there. I get the feeling that she physically lost kind of a lot of time in the end. She looked tired when she was running mm. up the hills there, but I think still that's a good race, a good first race on senior level. Um, it's not a shame to lose uh, more than 40 seconds compared to Natalia Gampoli in a sprint race like this. And I mean, she's in second position. So we just saw uh, Carolyn Olsen bouncing around now, and <laughs> but in, in the park with Vera Klemetinen, another of the uh, kind of younger Finns. She took a 23rd spot at the European uh, Sprint Champs, but she's made a really good start here. And it's going to be close to Gempeler and Klusner and other, those others uh, kind of vying for the top spots in this early stage. So Klemetinen goes into second place. Great start for the Finn. And remember, Gempeler still leading at the finish by those 49 seconds over Grace Malloy. And another of the uh, potential medalists, one of the favourites for a medal here, Eleanor Ross. But here's Klusner at the finish. We saw she was uh, still in third fastest at that very, very early stage. And she's not been losing those seconds like uh, we saw Grace Malloy do. And she's still 17 seconds behind Gempeler. So looks like she's had uh, a pretty kind of consistent race, I would say. Guessing from that. And Klusner, a great fixture in the Danish sprint relay team. May well get some more individual success today. But she too is yeah, dropping back, actually. We're looking at that control 20, dropping... Yeah, quite a few seconds there. Mm, but in and her really case, it doesn't, mm? yeah, it doesn't really look as it looked for Grace Malloy. It's not, she looks quite okay physically here. She doesn't look too tired. Seems that she might have done a mistake in the end. Yeah, maybe it's hard to say without having a look obviously at the, uh, the tracking, but rewarded with a second place finish there. Let's have a little look at uh, Natalia Gempeler and uh, Vera Klemetinen, the two uh, fastest at the eighth control. Mm, we see a difference mm. there to control seven, not the shortest one by Klemetinen. Uh, now it will be interesting to... Yeah, now we don't see the interesting part. <laughs> <laughs> but well, they she's, are only just, she's only just got there, so... Uh, yeah. 
And we know that uh, they still are together. <laughs> <laughs> So our standings at split one, which is the eighth control. Natalia Gempler, our leader at the finish, still our leader there. Clemetinen, we just saw, is, is within touching distance of Gempler. And I think Gempler just had really great strength throughout the, the whole course. She was able to carry that speed through, make good decisions as well, and looked very, very strong. But here is our defending champion, our four times defending champion, Maya Alm. But this is probably... The, the least good, the worst position she's been in at a start of a uh, sprint world championships. She's not had the preparation. She's had far from the preparation she'd like. In fact, she was declaring her aims to be running the long and the relay. She hasn't managed to do the training and the preparation for that. She's just running the sprint here. She's got that automatic spot by being defending champion. And, you know, she was very, very close to making to the Olympics. She's so fast she's got such great raw speed and so it's going to be so interesting to see how she's able to compete here because it really is kind of an unknown for Maya Alm. Mm, I mean she has a great base speed and uh, we know that she is uh, she has this sprint technique as well uh, the thing is just that we haven't seen her in a while mm. and that she had these uh, problems with the concussion. Oh. Yeah, that's exactly right. Oh, Andrea Benjaminson just, yeah, she can't go up there because she won't be able to get down again. So, got to go and turn back. And, and this is actually what you were kind of talking about earlier, Jonas. False confidence. Yeah, um, but in her case, she ma I think she made a decision, but noticed that it's not possible to execute this route she planned. Uh, but yeah, it, sometimes when you're not sure about your route, it's better, or almost every time, it's better to just stop. Yeah, well, luckily she didn't get too much further in that. But uh, we're going to wait and see yeah. where she is compared to Gempler. Gempler's still leading. She was I mean, 14 seconds behind in Control 11. Yeah, I mean, there you have a difference between the sprint and, for example, middle distance. In the middle distance, you can often just take the direction out of the control and then you can adapt your route a bit or the direction when you see that, okay, yeah, I have to, I have to go another way, but in sprint... Once you chose your route, you really have to execute it. Here's Clementinen, and she is going to go the different route choice, but just trying to find the control there. And she's very, very close. You can still see there. She's just one second faster than Gempler to control number 11. Although we've done that bigger, like kind of longer route choice since then. So we will wait and see whether she's still just seconds in it by the time she gets to the top of this next fortress and the next control. And she's four seconds quicker, <laughs> Vera Klimetinen. And uh, this, if she continues this way, this is going to be by far her best performance. And if she continues this way, she's going to be in for a leading position at that point. Let's have a look then at the roots. So now we see it. <laughs> Still, oh. mm. interesting. It was a bit slow, yeah. it was a bit faster what Gempler was doing, but still, it seems well, then, that her then speed Gempler is quite good. had some hesitations good. there, yeah. um, and, or doing less, doing fewer hesitations, I think, potentially. But it's uh, interesting to see Klemetinen's got silver and bronze medals from Forest events in Junior World Champs, but not managed to make it, uh, had that past success in a sprint. But now she seems to be, yeah, be having a lot more success. So my round then. We're going to get her first kind of indication of, of what her form's like, what her speed's like. And, I mean, she doesn't look that quick, but I think it might be uh, 
deceptive. <laughs> I, d I don't know if you would say the she same She just makes thing. it if look easy. You would easy. be running behind. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, I definitely <laughs> wouldn't be able to keep up. But I guess, I guess this is what great runners do: is they make it look easy. And I always thought that looking at how people like Chris Jones run, uh, you know, they they don't look like they're putting in any effort, and yet they're still going pretty quickly. So Maya Alm, she's going to go into fourth place there. And for me, it doesn't look entirely comfortable, but she's just going to... Maybe she'll do kind of what she did in Latvia, which uh, she was taking it steady for most of the first controls and then just kind of switched on the speed towards the end and was really able to take that. Carolyn Olsen, though, out of the start. She's had not had a great 2020 with various injury problems. But uh, she will be looking for a medal today. She's not yet got an individual World Champs medal. But here's Andrea Benny-Minson. Yeah, we saw her mistake there uh, when she was hesitating out from control. So where will Benjamin end up? really great Norwegian I think we're going to see her figure in a lot more races this week Be great to see what she's able to do and really driving for the line here you can see the determination on her face as she takes that second position pushing Klusner down into third and uh, Grace Malloy I think down into fourth place there so a good finish for uh, Benny Minson although you know we did see her make that mistake there she will be a bit annoyed about that you've got to be clean in order to make that work, Olsen, and uh, not a, the quickest start for, for Carolyn Olsen, and you can see she wasn't quite prepared for the next control. Just losing a few seconds in, in turning around there, and yeah, she's not had the best, the best start of the race, although only 14 yeah. seconds down. Let's see here, not the best decision to the second control, not a good decision to the fourth control. We have seen that in the men's race, it's slower. Uh, then again, not the best decision to the fifth control. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right, just up. adding up all those different mm. things, yeah. But Vera Klemetsina, let's see where she's able to finish. And she's going to be slower than Natalia Gempler. She was so close with the neutral athlete for so much part of this race but not quite towards the finish but I think she's going to be rewarded though with a second place she's going to push Benny Minson down you can see she was leading very early on and so close to Gempela at the start and uh, she goes into that second place but here's Alice Leak into the split two and she was leading then at control number 11 at least yet yeah, so Alice Leak there is up in the mix four seconds down um, on Gempela there, so Alice mm. Leek, who has got a top 10 position from a world champ sprint before. And you told me I can tell you when you, you you're allowed to get excited. Can I get excited? Now you're, yeah, you. Yes. Yeah, yeah, do it. <laughs> <laughs> Good, thanks. I've got permission. Um, but but I, I don't want to get too excited because there's so many great athletes, um, you know, still to go. Um, and uh, and one maybe who who got a surprise. Uh, win in her qualification was Adela Indrakova and she there's only two more to start after her this yeah really fantastic run in the qualifier from her to put her into that position Alexandra Hornick is here and she's had a good run we haven't seen very much of her uh, and it's going to be into a top three position for the pole Alexandra Hornick is yep she's out of that first place but racing for the second place here. And looks like she may well be rewarded with her best ever uh, position at a sprint world championships. Takes that second spot there. Rewarded, yeah. And Kempele seems to have had a good finish of the race. There are many runners losing time from control 14 to the finish. Yeah, Gempler's time really stacking up. It's it's so hard to know when you're an early starter whether that whether that's going to end up being a good time. But 
I mean, you can't talk about any orienteering without talking about Tova Alexanderson. She's uh, defending everything, basically. Um, <laughs> and uh, you, you can just talk so much about everything that she's won. And so Tova Alexanderson is always the outright favourite for the race, I think. So Maya Alm here, she's punched control two. Uh, and is she going to... Uh, no, she doesn't want to go that way. Same she's mistake as Benny Same Minson. mistake as Benny Minson, yeah. And that's... And she, uh, mm, I think this is the slowest of all the routes. Um, I mean, what we've seen before, it might be a result of the lack of uh, competitions she has been running in sprints during the last months or weeks, uh, more or less as everyone else. But I mean, she also mm. missed uh, many important trainings during the last six weeks. Um, so it's hard to get the routines. <laughs> But still, yeah, it's I mean, really uh, tough. But if any athlete can kind of can come back from uh, an injury like that, a concussion like that, and race well, it's Maya Alm. But she doesn't really seem to be running with confidence. I think, although you know, she just gone into the lead. So what what are we even talking about? Maya I mean, Alm uh, resumes normal service. We have been, we have seen um, Natalia Gempel uh, kind of running away from the others. Physically had a good finish, and they. I mean, Mayalm can do the same, uh, for sure, her strength is in this physical part. Let's see here. Different route choices, again. Mm. But, but it, uh, you know, unlike the European Championships, there doesn't seem to be one route, one route choice that you completely lose time on, basically. There you can see the mistake and the hesitation out of there. But uh, Teresa Sikova is the last starter here. She uh, is, has been competing at the senior level f since 2017, but only, a, I think, a second-year senior. She's been running up uh, a lot, and really, for such a young runner, is, is, has, has a lot of experience. But here is Alice Leek pushing all the way to the finish, and she's going to take the second place there. Alice Leek, 11 seconds behind Natalia Gempler, 12 seconds behind Natalia Gempler, is second when she uh, reaches the finish. And hopefully she's going to be happy with her performance that she's put together today. We'll be aiming for a, a second top 10 at the World Champs. Here is uh, Indrakova. As we already talked about, kind of that uh, surprise win of her heat this morning. But not being able to match that with early top, top speed here. Um, 12 seconds behind. It's, it's pretty close, though, to be honest. Her previous best sprint result, 22nd at the World Champs in 2017. But here's Tova Alexanderson, the second to last starter. You, the uh, European champion, of course and silver medalist from three years ago, last time we had a sprint world championships. Oh my goodness me, and she's gonna <laughs> be in such a leading position by the time she punches this first control. Tova Alexanderson's speed is just unparalleled here, I think. And to be only this way, this really short way through, this first loop is only a couple of minutes long, really. And to be that far in the lead at that point is very, very impressive. And we know she's very strong. She will be able to power up all these hills here as well. Eleanor Ross, we haven't seen much of yet, but she's a, a fantastic sprinter. She goes uh, into that uh, kind of fifth, sixth position, just a bit slower than Alice Leek, who just went into at the, the top spot. And look at the splits for Ross. She was uh, 28 seconds behind at control eight, and then she was uh, up in the lead again at control 11. She, so she must have picked a good route there. And Maya Alm, this is going to be really, really close, I think, with Natalia Gempler. Though we saw Gempler kind of do, I think, a bit of a hesitation on the way down here. So what can Maya Alm do? Is she going to able to take the new leading time? And now she really, really puts her foot down. 
Maya Alm with kind of the worst of seasons this season. What can she do? The four-time defending world sprint champion. But she looks like she's going to be behind the time of Natalia Gempler in the very last sections of this race. Natalia Gempler, our current leader. So Maya Alm, what can she do? The Dane, she's going to be late on the time of Gempler. But she goes into the silver medal position there. Maya Alm from Denmark. She will not take five in a row. But with this season or couple of seasons she's had, going into second spot is a fantastic result for her. Oh, all the drama, seeing uh, how these runners are going to get to the finish. They've got to really perform well and choose the right route choices as much as they can. So Teresa Yanashikova... Uh, has not had the best start, the uh, final starter from the Czech Republic, having won her heat. She is, I think, considerably behind, and it'll be interesting mm. to see what her route choices were. You can see she was 16 seconds behind at control 4 and 36 at control 8. I think this is a classic case of summing up bad route choices. Yeah, I think so. Caroline Olsen, though, is here crossing this bridge familiar style and we can see for control 18 she was 19 seconds behind so it's going to be close oh but she's making losing a few seconds here she's she's had a few kind of just stops like that has carolyn olsen so we're going to see if she's going to aim, end up in a medal position here will she be able to knock uh alice leak out of a medal position it's going to be Close, I think, here. She's certainly slower, though, than Gempler. She's going to be definitely, of course, slower than Alm. Where is she going to be? She's going to be slower than Leek as well. So Alice Leek still in a medal position as Carolyn Olsen just comes up the run in. She's going to end up outside the top five here, Carolyn Olsen. But you can see she's managed to pull a lot back, though, in the second part of the race. She was 47 seconds down at control 11, managed to pull it back and is... Rewarded with that sixth place. So, you know, Natalia Gempler not with uh, all the fastest splits uh, around the course. Abersold then, Simona Abersold. And she's 11 seconds down. So one second slower than Olsen was at that point. But maybe Carolyn Olsen made uh, a few mistakes. Oh, is that a... That's a mistake. Just dropping into the wrong kind of re-entrant. I don't know, something seems strange here. Let's turn the map here. Let's see. This is this Alexanderson. Is Alexanderson. <laughs> Going all the oh. way around. We, this, we, I think oh. she can lose some time here. We, she will lose a lot of time here. Oh my goodness me. Tova Alexanderson. Well, we know she can. She either wins or she'll make a mistake, uh, of judging by her past form, and that is a massive one. So we'll see how much damage that's done when she gets through to the next um, split time. But Adela Indrakova, well, she's not going to be among the top contenders, and in fact, look, she was 54 seconds down at control 11. So Indrakova not managed to match um, those, her kind of, well, her qualifying performance. But her previous best sprint, as I said, was 22nd at the World Champs in 2017. Hopefully she will kind of improve on that result. Well, she's caught up time from that mistake loss there and into uh, her 30th. But this is Tova Alexanderson. And we'll see what the damage is of that mistake because that was mm -hmm. a loss and she's not really hesitant in this section as well. But we you know she was, she's was. she got... Yeah. Yeah, you can see that she kind of lost the flow a bit, but she's pushing very hard here. Uh, it will be very interesting to see what the consequences of this mistake were. Through choice mistake coming up uh, this hill very soon i guess 
Well, I don't, I almost don't know, well, it's because we didn't see the whole route. It's hard to know if it's a route choice mistake or if it's... No, I mean yeah, to... Yeah, I think it must have been. The, the one to control 12. Yeah, to, to 12. It definitely was a mistake. I mean, she was yeah. 32 seconds ahead and now it's... No, it's uh, close again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I was going to say her speed is going to... Uh, is, is such that she can make a mistake and, and she... I mean, can still end up winning this uh, this world title, I, I think. I mean, she did a half a minute mistake in a sprint race and still she's up there. That's yeah. incredible. Yeah, let's have another look at that, um, what exactly happens. So goes back through. Then she has to go through the tunnel there, all the way around. Yeah, and then and she it wasn't was even behind. Like, yeah. Ellen and Ross then at the finish. We saw her previously lose some time and she just finishes in fourth place. Actually, that's not too far behind Gempeler. Ellen Ross just outside the medals. Here's Abersold though, as the runners finish thick and fast. And is Abersold going to push, uh, get in amongst the medals here at this point? She really is going to push for the line. I think she's going to be slower than Maya Alm here. But is she going to be just quicker than Alice Leek? I think she will be. So Abersold finishes in uh, joint third place with Alice Leek. Oh, and uh, so we've still got, of course, we've got uh, Tova Alexanderson to come. This is Teresa Yanashikova behind here. But we've got three more runners yet to finish. And there's a question mark over what Tova Alexanderson can do. But really, I think she's got that speed that she'll push both uh, Alice Leek and Simona Abersold out of the medals. Jana Shikova, we can see she was 55 seconds behind, nearly a whole minute behind at control number 11. Mm -hmm. uh, and maybe this is a case of not balancing the, the qualifier in the final. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, uh, to come back to, to Alexandersson, of course she doesn't know that it's still tight. Uh, in her feeling, I think she got a feeling about that she lost a lot of time. I mean, she must see that this wasn't mm. a good route, uh, but she doesn't know that she's still in contact. Uh, so I hope that she is not trying to overcompensate anything and just try to win back the time, but continues in the way she was doing before, because that was totally enough. Yeah, Jana Shikova there is in uh, 17th position. I think she's going to make the mistake that we saw Abasol make just there. And um, she was telling me on the, the podcast that I do that she, you know, she won her semi-final of the knockout sprint and then uh, I think really, really struggled in her final over at the European Championships, kind of struggling to recover in the very, very short time she had between the, being the last semi, in the last semi-final and then going through to the finals. So um, maybe it's a case again of going like very, very hard out in the qualifier and uh, not being able to recover well enough to do this uh, final but Adela Indrakova there and uh, more importantly Tova Alexanderson in the background and that's who we're going to stay looking at because uh, she's got the speed nearly takes a fall down on that corner and has got to be careful on the next one as well but what can Tova Alexanderson do she made a 30 second mistake doing a route choice we did not even think of but Tova Alexanderson has she got the pace to be able to match it and bearing in mind she started a minute behind Indra Kova, it's going to be... Actually, I think she's going to... Well, I don't know. I think she's going to be late here, is Tova Alexanderson judging it. And we want to see where Tova Alexanderson is here to the finish. And is she going to be able to get something? Oh, she is quicker than Tova Alexanderson here at the finish. She has more than enough speed to make up for that massive route choice mistake. And Alexanderson takes... Yet another world title here again at the sprint. She will take the win here today with a fantastic performance. You can see just how she was able to kind of claw back seconds at the end, having been 30 seconds ahead before that route choice. Who knows if she'll, she'll have known what, whether that route choice was a bad one. I think surely she must have realized uh, when doing it that, that it was that it was far too far, but she managed to claw back all that time her speed more than enough and just so impressive to be able to take that win with a 30 second mistake as she is going to be a force to be reckoned with for the whole of these world championships 
Tova Alexanderson with a win. I mean, what can you, what more can you say about Tova Alexanderson? Um, I'm kind of speechless. It shouldn't be possible to win this race with with this route. I mean, it's she loses half a minute in a sprint on one leg, and still she's up there and winning the race. Uh, that's just incredible. She has a great speed all the way. Uh, you, we saw her pushing to the finish. Uh, I mean that she she must have noticed that it wasn't the best route and still believing mm. that she can win this race. That's I mean that's a true champion. But then also I, I would like to highlight. I mean we have uh, Natalia Gempele up in silver position again mm. and yeah. Maya Alm on third position. That's yeah. that's very well done. And uh, I think you should get excited also about the fourth place by Alice Reed. That's just a great performance. Oh, I'm a, so excited to see that. Yeah, it's um, a pity we haven't seen place. more uh, of her in the picture. We just it saw is. her uh, when she came to the finish, <laughs> but she did a great job here. But there's lots of top, you know, I feel like in, a, in and amongst the mix of these kind of top 10, there's loads of athletes who've really kind of put down a mark who we, we just don't have time to see in a race that's just so rapid as this. And it's always a challenge mm. for the broadcasters to try and show all the runners and riders um, in a sprint race because it's just, it happens so quickly, you know. Um, and that's really, really tough to see. But our, our last um, starter here, Teresa Yanashikova is going to be uh, over a minute down. And also I can get excited about a 12th place for Grace Malloy in her first uh, uh, World Champs race. I can be excited about that one as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, am I allowed to be excited for that one? Yeah, yeah, you are. <laughs> um, but there's another... Natalia Gempel and Baby Luna as well celebrating. Uh, she was born about Christmas time. So, uh, yeah, to have a recovery. I think I saw on her Instagram she was, like, on the treadmill with Baby Luna attached to her, like, a few weeks after giving birth. And I was like, wow, that is determination. Um, there's one other runner I would like to highlight here on now let me see I think it is on 16th position Eve van Dongen from the Netherlands that's just a great yes. performance 16th in uh, world championships uh, that was unexpected good job yeah good, very good job and, and thanks for picking that one out because uh, yeah otherwise we, we'd have missed over that and just she's the only athlete here from the Netherlands she qualified really really well this morning and to be rewarded with that top 20 is really really impressive we've also got we've really got a great mixture of nations um represented here we've got alexander hornick in seventh place for poland as well we've got vera klimatin in the best of the Finns in eighth place too and uh i think just seeing the number of different flags there represented um on this sprint race is is really really great to see cecile calandry the best of the the French there, uh, Lena Strand ending up down in the uh, 15th, and you said Yves Van Dongen there, uh, 16th for the Netherlands. That is really, really impressive there. Um, yeah, and but then I, I guess ultimately our our medals here on on this women's sprint race going to three uh, very very well known names as opposed to uh, the men's race with uh, almost you know with with a new new face on the scene. Yeah, and I mean, it, it's not a big surprise that experienced runners as Tuve Alexanderson and Natu Natalia Gampele and Mayalm take medals here. It's quite a difficult sprint uh, in many different ways, um, but it was more of um, a surprise that young runners win the men's race, uh, for me at least. But let's take a look at the three medalists here. See that Maya Alm is a bit behind there, and we also s see the speed by Tove Alexanderson on these first controls, just running away from the others. Oh, at that point she was 18 seconds ahead of uh, Natalia Kempele. Here, still going strong here. Maya Alm going around to the ninth control. And then here, the very special route by the winner, Tove Alexanderson. 
don't know. Some somewhere here, she must realize that it's very hard to get into the uh, into this fortress and like into the right position to even be able to attack the control. It it feels like one of these puzzles where you sit with your pencil and try to find the way out again. And at that point, my arm was quickest of all of these mm -hmm. athletes. You see how interesting route choices Ooh. here. See the seven teams control. Uh, and mm, you see and here how good for the others. Yeah, Alexander Sam is just pushing oh. away again. I mean, she had such a great speed all the way. It will be very interesting. I hope they will ask her in the interview if she knew that it was a, yeah, mm. not the perfect route <laughs> because that would be interesting if it affected her thinking and her tactics for the last part of the race. Yeah, because you could either be someone who thinks they've thrown it all away on there and, you know, that's your race over, or you think, I've made a mistake, but I can make it back. Let's have a listen. Tove Alex, Alex Anderson, congratulations on your 11th gold. It's unbelievable. However, it's first in a sprint distance. So is it harder for you to win sprint than, uh, uh, than long? Uh, I have been focused more on the forest disciplines. Uh, that's what I like most. So also this year I focus a bit more on the forest, but uh, I know that I'm also good in sprint and that my shape is really good. So yeah, I'm so satisfied with, uh, or, with what I did today. Yeah, and I saw you, you were really exhausted uh, in the Finnish area. Did you give it all today? Yeah, I definitely gave it all, uh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, on the course, you took a very unusual route choice to the control number 12. Nobody else did it. And you lost some time, uh, time there. Uh, did you sense that it was not an optimal one? Yeah, my, I thought that I could uh, run through the Finnish area, that it was a route choice through here and that it would be a corridor through because on the map it was like a little gap, so I thought it was possible to go here. But then when I come there, I saw that no, it's not possible, it's not the meaning that this is a route choice. So then I get a bit stressed because then I understand that uh, this route choice is really, really bad. So I understand that I lost a lot of time and I really thought that the race was over. But I continue to fight everything I had anyway, so I'm really happy with that. Yeah, you managed that really well. And how did you enjoy uh, the navigation through the tunnels and all the walls around here? Oh, it was fun. It was really tricky and you had to be focused all the time. So, yeah, it was a fun sprint. It was something different. So, yeah, I really enjoyed it. Thank you, Tove. One more time, congratulations and good luck for the rest of the week. Thank you. Well, uh we we asked the asked the right question there to find out that I, I, but then I can't think she would want to go through the the finish arena. That doesn't look like a a good route choice to me because then you still have the same difficulties of kind of getting into the fortress as well. So I'm no, but surprised that she saw that as being a route choice. But it's fun that she mentions that the the thought comes up that okay then it must be a really bad route choice. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And also, as I said before, it really makes a champion that, uh, yes, she realized this was a terrible route, but my reaction to it is to fight even more because there might still be a chance. And I don't know if everyone else would have the same mindset in that situation. Yeah, I think that's really, really well put. And, and as you said, such a sign that she's a, a well-deserved champion, um, just but just just her speed and also the fact that she mentioned there that she's been focusing most on the the forest races we know where that's where she really kind of loves to perform the best but she's got the kind of skills to be able to and, and the speed and the strength to be able to transfer that great forest pace into a sprint race like this and something that with you know all the the strength required you you need to you maybe that good forest speed is gonna serve you in some good stead it certainly did for tova alexanderson and of course she's going to be uh, the favorite for all of the other races um throughout this week as well all the forest races especially with the kind of tough climbs that we're going to see so uh as we we had a fantastic race and really two um two swedish winners here 
with Isaac von Krusenfuerner and with Tova Alexanderson. They've made the best possible start to this World Championships. Uh, two golds for Team Sweden. So we'll be back again tomorrow with the sprint relay where all the teams who we know will be Switzerland v Sweden again to take the gold medal. And uh, I think it's going to be a big uh, kind of battle for the who can take that bronze medal position as we're used to seeing. They're going to be heading over to the town of uh, Doxy. But we're going to be having our uh, medal, our flower ceremony. Sorry, we will get the medals will be awarded once all the results are made official. But we, it's fantastic to see some spectators in here. We've allowed the ticketed spectators to, uh, I think we've got a thousand here uh, in this arena here in Terezin. But we're going to have our flower ceremonies here. We can see all the athletes kind of lining up ready for that. Of course, all the introductions we made first. So, as you can hear, our third place goes to Tim Robertson, his second World Champ Sprint medal. Fantastic performance today. In second place from Norway, we have Kasper Fosser. And our winner today, new world champion in sprint orienteering. I think nobody could have predicted this. Isaac von Krusenfuerner has taken the win today. Good to see him in action here, climbing up the podium. <laughs> we didn't see him running before. Uh, so good to give him some TV time. Yeah, I mean, it's such a shame we managed to miss uh, his run. But starting from... Uh, the early position means that, yeah, we, he started and he finished before our, our broadcaster had uh, kind of yeah. got underway. But and that I think just kind of reflects what a surprise it is to see him. You know, we, we we've tried. You know, he has had uh, like 98 percent good races in in the European Championships, but not quite uh, got everything together. And and this I think just is a case of everything coming together on the day picking enough good route choices uh, that he was able to uh, take that win. And a, a photo there for the, the three medalists of the men's sprint race here at the World Championships 2021 in Terezin. His first first podium on a on a, a senior level, so you've got to make the most of it, I guess. It's got too much stuff; he can't carry it off the podium. There we go. Oh no, I haven't got enough hands to carry all the stuff. There we go. Oh, what a horrible situation to not have enough hands <laughs> to carry all the. Prices All the things the you've just won. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's a tough life, isn't it? <laughs> tough life to be a world champion. Okay, we're going to have a flower ceremony for the women's. Oh, Natalia Gempelman is getting stage. Go on.
The prizes will be handed by Mr. Laura Halona, President of the International Orienteering Federation, Mr. Kanal Preza, a member of Parliament of Czech Republic and the first Vice Mayor of the uh, city Litovnice, and Mr. Jan Pokurka, uh, the owner of uh, Kittel Company, the main partner of the uh, of, uh, World Orienteering Championship. Na třetím místě se umístila reprezentantka Dánska Maja Aul. So third place, a bronze medal for Maja Aul, meaning she's medaled in the last five world sprint races and a fantastic feat after the injury ridden season that she's had. Natalia Gempler rewarded with another silver medal in on the sprint stage also after coming back from maternity leave another impressive feat but Tova Alexanderson probably the most impressive of all she can make a 30 second mistake yes she can still win and she shows she's a worthy champion for really fighting all the way to the line so the second gold then for Sweden and really I think that's that's quite a a story and a bit of overcoming of adversity for all three of these medalists here in this women's sprint competition and uh, I'm sure they will we will see much more certainly of Tova Alexanderson on the podiums probably two of Natalie Gempel I'm not sure my Alm is running any of the other races we'll see if she makes the sprint relay team uh, tomorrow but uh, you know just running the one individual race and coming away with a medal as well shows why she is a true sprinter as well. So congrats to the three top women at uh, today's sprint race, having successfully navigated these tunnels, these high walls, these really, really parts of the sprint race. And, and for, for all of the people on the podium today, you really had to be an absolute consummate navigator to be able to you know have a great result here today you had to it was a real test of who is best orienting wasn't just about the running you really had to get everything right and these well, three have done are that. you sure about that Catherine because the well, one no, okay, winning but didn't, have everything right. didn't have to get everything right but uh, you had to get enough right <laughs> and she got enough right but you have to or you have to orient here well around most of the course <laughs> okay well I mean what a great uh, start in such special terrain for this week of the world championships let's hope it continues uh, with more fantastic races throughout the week as I said we will be back tomorrow afternoon for the sprint relay before our focus turns to the forest and the forest races we will see you tomorrow see you